So would you encourage the players of Jade to explore your fanfics? If they're curious, they can. Go right ahead. It's still Menoskine on fanfiction.net. They're still there. I don't know how many of them. Hello everyone, my name is Funny Han, and today we have a very very special video where for the first time ever I think I'm going to show my face on the Jade videos and with the creator right here, Maynos himself. Can you introduce yourself, sir? Well, hello there, Maynos kind here, which uh, can be a bit weird to say considering it's written like this, but the thing is that it's an Italian pronunciation because I'm Italian, class 1988. I guess my internet uh, claim to fame is being the creator of Team JPDE, which is the people behind JPDE Sonata of Fire, aka that one Ruby visual novel that every now and then seems to pop up on someone's reader. That's me. If you're watching this on the main channel when it's already out, then you will know that this video is going to be divided into multiple interviews because obviously that's going to be like too long and YouTube doesn't like videos being too long. Yeah, yeah how are you right now, sir? I hope the pandemic doesn't, um, you know, harm you too much. No, thankfully uh, he hasn't uh, in a while. I'm fully vaccinated, even though now it seems like we're going to need a recall in the near future. But uh, he hasn't inconvenienced me uh, health-wise, at least, uh, because I think that uh, I can speak for literally everyone in the world when I say that the pandemic uh, has uh, broken a lot of routines and taken away a lot of things that a lot of us took for granted, like traveling. And now we don't know how with the evolution, so I hope uh, that also everyone uh, watching uh, is healthy, they're safe, I can take care of themselves. I hope that the governments all over the world will have the opportunity to vaccinate uh, all of them sooner rather than later, because that's the only way we can go past uh, this crisis that we are all in. But in one sentence, yes, I'm fine. Thank you for asking. <laughs> Before we start recording, I actually ask you, where does the nickname come from? Because you are known with a lot of nicknames. You are known by Maino Scan. You're also known by Papa Italiano. So please explain a little bit there. Okay, uh, Maino Scan. It's a nickname that I thought of when I was, I think, 14. Actually, Menos is the anagram of my first name, which is Simone, which is the term for Simon. That's where it comes from. Kain instead comes from. I had a video game about an anime series called Get Backers, and there was a, a move in the game to keep it short that was called Kainko, and I knew from the manga in Italian there was. Uh, uh translated to the perfume of fire so i thought hey kind must be of fire so literally simone of fire that's the that's the story behind it but it sounded cool so i have never changed my online nickname ever since right so um does your nickname anyway related to the title sonata of fire no no at all that came uh, a long time later, like uh, again, 14, and uh, 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 I can't even count backwards right now. It was so long ago, but uh, Sonata of Fire, I started, uh, like, first it was just JPDE, and then Sonata of Fire is the subtitle that I only came up with, uh, I think, a year and a half ago now, at the time of the recording. So, no, they don't have any direct connection to each other, no. It's not that I like fire, like at the time, again, I was 14, I thought it sounded cool. Sonata of Fire, instead, uh, it refers uh, more to the themes uh, of the game. Sonata is a reference uh, to uh, a movement in a symphony and also the sequel as a reference to that. And Of Fire is less about my uh, like of fire and more about the themes of the game and what happens in it. So that, that's really it. Ah, okay. <laughs> okay, we'll get into the game later on, but first let's just go to the first section where we talk about the inspirations of the game. So let's start with how do you get to know Ruby? This is a weird uh, sequence of events, so please follow me on this. Okay. What happened was that uh, I wasn't aware of Ruby, um, but the thing is I wasn't even aware of Rooster Teeth. Because I wasn't an Xbox guy growing up, I never played Halo, I never played a single Halo game because I'm not a first-person shooter kind of uh, player, I prefer other genres. 
So I wasn't aware of who they were. The first time I came into contact with Ruby was not even through Rooster Teeth, but through Screw Attack, which was uh, an internet uh, content production company that then Rooster Teeth absorbed. And they had, uh, I think still have, a show called uh, uh, Death Battle, where they put uh, one character against the other. And there was one that was... Uh, Tifa Lockhart from Final Fantasy VII versus Yang Xiao Long. So I remember the you know the comments like, well, of course that happened because Rooster Teeth just put screw attack, so of course they would have their own cutter win. And I'm like, ah, okay. And I immediately wasn't a fan. <laughs> so, but uh, that's how I first became aware of Rooster Teeth and of Ruby as a series. I see. Do you play visual novels regularly? Uh, and what is your favorite? Hmm, I don't play them as regularly as all, but the thing is that we have to decide what uh, visual novel means. Most people, when they think nowadays of visual novels, they think of visual novels in the um, vein of uh, Fate Stay Night. Mm. Like they're very big, uh, they have a lot of writing uh, to the point of being bloated, verbose, uh, a lot of branching paths, uh, six endings, only one true. Those kind of visual novels I hate. Mm. I really don't like that. They're boring me. They're bloated. They feel like overwritten. They take uh, dec like decades to finish. I really don't like them. And uh, we can call them pure visual novels, I guess. I prefer impure visual novels. So they, there are um, visual novels with an element of gameplay, uh, or that uh, dating sim elements. Uh, and I feel that those kind of visual novels respect your time better than visual novels in the style of Fate Stay Night. I really don't like those kind of visual novels. I really like uh, the first two Danganronpas. Those can be uh, considered impure visual novels. And then there is, of course, uh, uh, the Ace Attorney series. I have uh, liked... Uh, visual novels that are just words before. But the problem is that they're older. They're from the 90s, aka they're from before Fate Stay Night got big. So they were written, the style of writing were, was very different. And uh, there are two that I remember very fondly. One is called Princess Waltz. That is an element of fighting, uh, but it's a card game. So I guess it's impure. And another one that is just writing was called Nocturnal Illusion. I remember because it uh, and a dating scene called True Love were the very first two visual novels I've ever played. And I still remember them fondly. And another that I can think of suggesting to people is called The Season of Sakura. That's also a classic uh, and uh, I really like that one. So when it comes to visual novels, they're those. And uh, I don't play them that much because, again, most of them, uh, most of visual novels are in the vein of Fates Tonight. They take too much time and I risk uh, just not liking them. Uh, most of the time, the case like uh, Stains Gate, uh, I really didn't like Stains Gate. Uh, I just couldn't stand the main character, which is a very important <laughs> part of any story for me. Right. So, uh, you can explain a little bit about appreciating the player's time, right? So, yes. what kind of elements that you can specify where it kind of wastes the character's time in a visual novel? When you over describe. And when you use uh, long-winded sentences uh, to describe something that uh, you could do with uh, a movement of a sprite, uh, a visual, or a sound effect. And that, that's a thing that I noticed. Uh, like, uh, of course, uh, Nazu now, uh, the creator of Fates Night series, is uh, famous uh, for the kind of writing. The problem is that everyone else seems to have... Uh, uh, taking it as a, their own as well, because it's trendy, I guess, I don't know. But the thing is uh, that uh, I really can stand when something gets uh, strung out for an entire scene, even though uh, first uh, you could uh, do it uh, much quicker with a sound effect uh, or uh, a movement of a sprite of a visual, or, and that's a very big pet peeve, let's say that it's a scene where a character needs to figure something out. If uh, you, the player, due to the characters and the information that you have and that they have, can feel that immediately, it's offensive that the character in the scene takes uh, five more minutes of winded discussion and explanation to figure it out. That's uh, a reference to a very specific span in Stain's Gate. Uh, when I literally started playing it, I think there is uh, still a video on Twitch of that, uh, I figure out what the character should figure out five minutes before 
him. And that, yeah, this thing kept going. I kept going. I kept going. I was shouting at the screen. You are obsessed about this. You seriously cannot even entertain a thought. I am entertained at all. I played uh, a few choice ones uh, that inspired me. And uh, Princess Waltz is the one that I really want to take as an example. This kind of story, this kind of writing uh, with uh, a combat element. Uh, that's the one that I can say has had the biggest influence in the original concept for JPD. So let's move on to the writing. So what is your experience in writing stories or fanfics? Oh boy, again, we had to go back to when I was 14. Even before that, as a kid, I wrote stuff. Like, uh, I remember a, a spy story that was a, a mishmash of I don't know how many things. It was, uh, I put together Miss, Mickey Mouse Mystery Magazine, with, which was a comic book that came out in Italy, I don't know, in the rest of the world. The Virtua Fighter anime, and I don't know even what else. It was weird. I still remember it. I wrote it in a yellow notebook. It was weird. Then growing up, uh, you know, getting into anime, comic books. Uh, at 14, I started writing Italian fan fiction for Naruto. My very first fanfics were for Naruto. Then I get got into other um, fandoms, uh, and uh, then I wrote a fantasy book as well that didn't go nowhere for um, reasons that I rather not get into, just because it's boring. Nothing uh, weird of uh, sad, just uh, long, long explanation. But I kept writing in one way or another uh, for all my life, I think, uh, reading and writing and play video games. Uh, and then, once upon a time, that happened, oh, I think I can do this. And that's how uh, JPD happened. Of course, we can get into more detail later, but uh, I've been writing one way or the other all my life. Right. So, um, I'm pretty sure that you deleted those old fanfics of yours. The, okay, uh, the Italian ones, uh, they were on a forum. And uh, the backup was on a very old computer. I have no idea where the hell that, uh, that thing is anymore. The Italian ones are probably lost to the internet, I believe. English ones, uh, no. There is, they're still all on my fanfiction.net account. They're still there if someone wants to go uh, uh, read them. And they can see the evolution from 14 years old all the way into adult life and how my writing evolved, <laughs> if they're curious. <laughs> I also have uh, an EO3 account now. They are starting to put some stuff on. Mm. So, yeah, no. So, would you encourage the players of Jade to explore your fanfics? If they're curious, they can. But the thing is, uh, they're fanfictions uh, and there are different formats. So, they're not going to find uh, the same kind of writing that they can see in Jade, uh, in JPD. If they're curious, go right ahead. It's still Menos Kine on fanfiction.net. They're still there. I don't know how many of them. <laughs> A lot of them aren't finished. Right. So, do you have any experience in game development or coding before making Jade? Uh, game development, no. Coding a little, because that's the thing. Before I started to make Jade, uh, I had discovered Rampy, and I started experimenting with it and learning. There was also another thing that I tried uh, to work on, another project. Uh, I became aware of Rampy, I think, about a year or so before I started to make JPD. But um, I never really made anything concrete with it. I just, you know, dabbled in it, uh, experimented, but I never made anything uh, substantial with it. Other coding? Uh, no, no. Just, just the Rampy. That was my first approach to game development and coding. Can you go into more details about um, where does like multiple elements of your experiences melt into what is now Jade? Okay, of course, uh, there is the visual novel element, and most importantly, I don't like this style of visual novels. Uh, I want to make a visual novel, I want to make it like this, like Princess Waltz. And then there is, of course, uh, my style of writing. Uh, I found that it was also always very visual. What do I mean by that? Because it was fan fiction based on anime, another visual medium. So whenever I wrote a fanfic for that kind of stuff, I always tried to translate what happened on the screen in a written form. For example, I used a lot a verb that I think I made up, or maybe I just started using it as other people, sweet dropped. 
You know, in anime, there's also the, the drop of sweat on someone's face when something happens that wants them to pawn their face or whatever. I describe that as sweat dropped, as a verb. And mm. people got that. And it was uh, something uh, that I felt was necessary to translate something that most people had the experience as a visual medium with. And that's something that I think prepared me for uh, Jade, because in Jade, I give as much attention to the written part as to the visual part. So in a way, I was already primed for that kind of writing as uh, JPD ended up being. The written word has a lot of power, but uh, again, and that's in the, because you need to strike a balance because I feel that a lot of visual novel creators, uh, especially again, after Fate Stay Night, which popularized uh, that kind of uh, over described bloated uh, way of writing, uh, take uh, too much uh, time. They focus too much on the written part, uh, on the novel part, uh, but not enough on the visual part. You need to strike a balance uh, between the two and know the strengths of both sides. Otherwise, uh, I personally really don't like it. Okay, so now we are moving to the audience question for this sections, and we have a lot of people here asking, what makes you want to make Jade? Here we had to go a little bit more into my relationship with Ruby, and my relationship with uh, a very good friend, one of my oldest friends, uh, that uh, she's also... Uh, um, a member on the Discord, but she doesn't really come around very often. Uh, I know her for years, and she's actually the one who introduced me, not to Ruby, because I was aware of it, uh, but she introduced me to Penny, the character of Penny Polendina. She mm -hmm. showed me some pictures and the design, and I really liked it. I, like, I immediately connected to that design, because uh, we can say whatever you want about Ruby, uh, but uh, they always had uh, some very interesting character designs. Uh, I have to say, especially in the first seasons, uh, but that's a matter of taste. They were, at the same time, a bit simpler, but with enough details. I don't know, I just like them more. And Penny was my favorite. She also tells me, oh, by the way, though, she kind of died. I'm like, damn it! But then I like... Uh, we, me and my friend, we used to do a lot of role plays and uh, collective writing together. So I decided, okay, what about, uh, because I really don't like what they did to Penny, what about we make a story where Penny has a team of her own, friends of her own, you know? And then while we were uh, playing this uh, and, you know, discussing the background and everything, I was like, oh, huh, this could uh, actually make a good fanfic. I was writing a fanfic. Hey. What about I try and make a visual novel with it because I wanted to do it with Rampy? So that's it. And that's how then EK became. And two months after the demo, I started my Patreon and I was like, okay, what the hell is happening here? But if I had to answer in a sentence, I wanted to make Jade uh, JPD and I still want to make it out of love for Penny Polendina. That's uh, pretty much the simplest way to put it. All right, so we got one more question from Alexander Rose. Dear Manos, what motivates you to make both Jade 1 and Jade 2? Well, wait, we already explained that. <laughs> okay, never mind mm -hmm. then. Yeah, I think I kind of screwed up or something because I wrote this in like 3 a.m. in the morning, so... <laughs> uh, okay, 